the US National Solar Observatory in Sunspot, New Mexico, The Great Mystery. Closed on the 6th of September, the story virally spread throughout the Western world. The question is, can we trust the official explanation for the closure? What fragments of information can we piece together from covert journalists and researchers? Did something extraordinary happen here? Or was it the case of a badly bungled, poorly managed criminal investigation? This is an update, a part two, preceding the video posted on the 15th of September. The internet was awash with rumours concerning the authorities' suppression of UFO evidence and highly unusual solar activity. As the dust settles and we all start to bring our feet back on the ground, getting a little more clarity on the situation and maybe a little red-faced reflection, the official National Solar Observatory website posted a banner directing people to the Aura website. Aura stand as the private management organisation that continually maintain and manage the observatory. On the 16th of September, Aura released a press release via their website, which reads as follows. On September the 6th, the Association of Universities for Research in Astronomy and the National Science Foundation made the decision to temporarily vacate the Sunspot Solar Observatory at Sacramento Peak, New Mexico, as a precautionary measure while addressing a security issue. The facility closed down in an orderly fashion and is now reopening. The residents that vacated their homes will be returning to the site and all employees will return to work this week. Aura has been cooperating with an ongoing law enforcement investigation of criminal activity that occurred at Sacramento Peak. During this time we became concerned that a suspect in the investigation potentially posed a threat to the safety of local staff and residents. For this reason, Aura temporarily vacated the facility and ceased science activities at this location. The decision to vacate was based on the logistical challenges associated with protecting personnel at such a remote location and the need for an expeditious response to the potential threat. Aura determined that moving the small number of on-site staff and residents off the mountain was the most prudent and effective action to ensure their safety. In light of recent developments in the investigation, we have determined there is no risk to staff and the Sunspot Solar Observatory is transitioning back to regular operations as of September the 17th. Given the significant amount of publicity and the temporary closure has generated, and the consequent expectation of an unusual number of visitors to the site, we are temporarily engaging a security service while the facility returns to a normal working environment. We recognise the lack of communications while the facility was vacated was concerning and frustrating for some. However, our desire to provide additional information had to be balanced against the risk that, if spread at the time, the news would alert the suspect and impede the law enforcement investigation. That was a risk we could not take. Close quote. Once the statement was released, even some of the quarters of the mainstream were scratching their heads at this one. An example, Vice News, dated the 17th of September, headlines, The Sunspot Solar Observatory, sort of, explains why it mysteriously closed down. The New Mexico sheriff, Benny House, who was first interviewed and effectively broke the story about the closure to the media, is turning out to be a bit of a maverick in this unfolding saga. FBI lackey, he is not. In the beginning, he was quoted as saying, there was a Black Hawk helicopter, a bunch of people around with antennas and work crews on towers, but nobody would tell us anything. The sheriff's rhetoric seems to directly contradict the seemingly benign calming statement of Aurora, who indicate it was their decision to vacate, which appears at odds with the chaotic FBI, helicopters and intense secrecy that the sheriff was describing. He further communicated with frustration that the lack of explanation surrounding the situation has put the public at risk. Aura have been told the criminal investigation into unknown criminal activity has been finalised. Staff of the observatory will be called to a collective meeting to discuss the details of the ongoing investigation at some point on the 17th of September. Sheriff Benny House continued with his renegade attitude during a very frank TV interview he gave for ABC7 when asked to comment about the recently released aura statement. Chicken sh- chicken sh- chicken sh- I'm going to tell you, because that's how I feel about it. That was the reaction of Otero County Sheriff Benny House after I showed him the news release that stated Aura, the agency that oversees the Sunspot Observatory, closed everything down because of a suspect that potentially posed a threat to the safety of local staff and residents. Even after an intense evacuation by the FBI that remains shrouded in secrecy, 
the final leftover security consisted of two ribbons of tape and a temporary stop sign. A drone operator under the name of Paul M via YouTube posted footage recorded on the 12th of September of a deserted observatory site. During the filming, he briefly captured two individuals wandering around the site. Ranson Godwin and his son, coincidentally, were also busy investigating the area. They had been bold and simply bypassed the entranceway stop sign and started looking around whilst continually filming. Ranson Godwin was interviewed by Jimmy Church on Fate of Black. They discussed their discoveries. Godwin stated they arrived at the entranceway to the compound to find the deputy sheriff hanging around. But strangely, given the circumstances, the sheriff was uninterested in their presence, even though they were both clearly carrying camera equipment. Godwin, upon entering the site, was massively surprised there was no FBI, no police. It was completely empty. Houses within the compound, which housed the observatory staff, were empty, boarded up. Cars were left behind. Orange cones separated the various residential properties. Looking into the windows, he could see desks were empty and looked like they had been cleaned with the contents and computers taken away. Godwin also noted a very strange odour, which he thought could be from recently used cleaning chemicals. The strangest thing they came across was the fact that garages were left open, cars and tools were left exposed for anyone to walk in and steal. Even weirder though, through one of the windows they spotted an X-Files DVD that was stuffed on the top of a stack of rubbish. Could this be symbolic, a middle finger from the FBI to all researchers and Truth Community members? Who knows? It was Godwin's opinion that the authorities were trying to make it look like there was no drama, attempting to quell the situation. So let's recap. The FBI take over the observatory on the 6th, involving a helicopter, with an immediate evacuation. They effectively leave a supposed crime scene, unguarded. Then after the story goes viral, helped in part by the Drudge Report apparently publishing the story that another seven observatories had also been closed. It takes until the 16th of September to release a statement. Ten days later. This all cast doubt on the official explanation by the authorities. So the sheriff's expletive response to Aura's statement could be close to the truth. Speculative questions such as, did the scientists see something? Or were they prevented from seeing something? Or was it a sophisticated attempt at social engineering? A honeypot to catch people out, highlighting how easily led people are by conspiracies? Or was it a case of a genuine criminal activity that was overly heavy-handed in its response and poorly managed in its communication to the media and the wider world? The official results of the investigation were released on the 19th of September by the FBI. It was stated the janitor had been downloading and distributing child pornography via a hidden laptop at the facility. QRQE reported the following. In August, they began speaking to the chief observer at Sunspot, who said he found a laptop running in several empty offices over the last few months. He told the feds what he found on the desktop was not good, and it appeared to be child porn. Once the janitor realised his computer was no longer there, the director says he feverishly started looking through the facility, making comments about lack security at the facility, and said it was only a matter of time before the facility got hit. He believed there was a serial killer in the area and that the killer might enter the facility and execute someone. The director says that's when he became concerned for his personal safety, and along with the agencies that operate the facility, decided to evacuate it and shut it down. Close quote. We could entertain this as a genuine operation, a genuine crime, but if we wanted to be critical of the official version of events, we could ask questions like, why was the sheriff kept in the dark? Why did the FBI come with antennas? Why use a Black Hawk helicopter? Why close the entire facility for over 10 days? Why evacuate and close the post office and redirect all the postal workers to work in another office? With school shootings or terrorist attacks, the narrative and events are fed to the public almost immediately. Why is it taking so long to release a statement? The recently outed Emery Smith, who claims to have worked in a myriad of black projects deep within underground bases and at points even worked alongside extraterrestrials, posted the following comment on his Twitter feed in response to the official disclosure. I've been biting my tongue on this for a while, but no, sorry. This is not what happened. A lot of you have asked me about this. And to answer you, yes, I do know what occurred, and it looks like you do too, as your intuition about this so far has been correct. Earlier explanations concerning the reasons for an FBI criminal investigation, including the Chinese or Russians hacking computer equipment within the facility to spy on either the missile testing facility at White Sands 
or Holloman Air Force Base. Other theories have included a disgruntled employee threatening to bomb the observatory due to funding cuts, which would threaten the continuing operation of the observatory. A severe mercury leak from the telescope's background technology, and even an employee that was discovered selling stolen observatory equipment on the open market. On the 17th of September, journalist Linda Moulton Howe spoke with Jimmy Church on Fate of Black. Howe described how it was a creeping story, with it taking a week after the closure for the rumours to start circulating. She was scathing towards the alternative media, and namely the judge report, for pushing the story that other observatories had been forcefully closed. Her colleague, Peter Lavender, did extensive research and found many of the observatories were still working normally. She accused websites of pushing the stories for clicks and cashing in on the traffic. She mentioned not finding any evidence for the closure of other observatories around the world by the FBI or other agencies linked to other nation states. But some of the webcams were down, coincidentally, for maintenance reasons. The rest of the webcam links, in hindsight, were also quite old, so may have been inactive for quite a while. But researchers such as Kerry Cassidy of Project Camelot still maintain from her insiders, categorically, that seven other observatories were taken down. So is it possible this story has been suppressed? I can't find an article the judge report linked to that Howe spoke about, but some websites do refer to an article from Zero Hedge, which discusses the Sunspot Observatory, but it never mentions other observatory closures. Has the information been scrubbed away? Or maybe it was never there in the first place. In terms of photographic evidence of alleged craft around the sun, much has come from Gina Maria Colvin Hill, posted on her Facebook page. Although very interesting, more work would need to be done looking into the equipment she was using and rule out dust or reflections from the camera lens. Interestingly, Gina's images were used in a recent post by the covert journalist Benjamin Fulford. Fulford previously worked as the Asia-Pacific Bureau Chief for Forbes magazine and worked extensively within the mainstream sector before having an awakening. Now he reports on information concerning the cabal, secret societies and the intelligence community, areas that just aren't tolerated or even covered by the mainstream platforms. In an article dated the 17th of September titled MI6 Says Cabal Rule Could Collapse in Three Months, Fulford wrote, CIA sources connected to secret bases in Antarctica say the sudden surge of activity in the intelligence community was related to the sudden closure last week of seven solar observatories. In particular, sources say, the solar observatory in Sunspot, New Mexico, has been observing the sun since the Roswell incident. They belong to a special off-grid group known as the Watchers. There are several of these special observatories strategically placed around the planet. They have files full of photos and video recordings of wingmaker ships coming through the sun, as well as big ships coming through as part of the Galactic Federation's Observe and Assist Humanity mandate. The Cabal Deep State is backed up against the wall. They are grasping for feathers now. They went in and grabbed everything out of fear and panic. Gag orders have been issued. We don't know the final play yet. This may turn against them and be used as a main act of a disclosure event. The sources sent the following three photos of the observations that led to the closure of the observatories. The MI6 source said the observatories were shut down because they wanted to carry out more of an orderly disclosure process in order not to cause panic or misunderstanding among the surface population. As a result of Gina's images being featured in Fulford's post, either means the MI6 source forwarded this information or there are actual elements of truth hidden in the extract. Fulford further made the connection that activity at the observatory could be linked to an increased surge of UFO activity around the world and even tropical storm instances after a significant burst of unusual solar activity. Fulford in the past for the majority has rubbish stories concerning covert secret space programs and UFO activity, but recently Fulford has been covering this subject in more and more detail. Although in the same article he also wrote, it may well be that all this woo-woo space stuff is a smoke and mirrors designed to hide a small cabal of old men. Several sources say that they are the elders of Zion from prying eyes of the slave population they've been ruling over for so long. Another very interesting aspect of the solar observatory drama concerned NASA's SDO. Again, this was covered in the previous video and involved the partial eclipse of the sun by an oval object, twice over a five hour period. Some commentators said it was purely natural lunar activity, but a bypass happening twice just didn't make sense when attempting to visualise the orbit. 
SDO stands for Solar Dynamics Observatory and was launched in 2010 and provides, in essence, an uninterrupted video feed of the sun. The NASA SDO website allows you to download the various scientific solar imaging videos. The 9th and 10th detailed a dual solar eclipse. The 9th was a new moon phase, but looking back at other new moon phases, such as the 11th of August and 13th of July, I couldn't find similar examples of an eclipse. At the time, I considered this a significant finding, but conceded in the previous video that maybe I was missing something scientifically. So after some research, it was discovered that here in the United Kingdom, the University of Lancashire has a research connection with NASA's SDO. After further digging via Facebook and then LinkedIn, I was able to find a connected individual who worked in this area at the university. The individual titled himself as Research Associate in Solar Physics at the University of Lancashire. I wrote the following. Hi, I just had a quick question concerning the NASA SDO. Over the 9th and 10th of September this year, the moon passes into frame of the SDO twice within a five hour period and in opposite directions. I was interested in understanding the mechanics of how this happens. Could you help answer this or point me in the direction to find out the answer? Thanks so much, Simon. Amazingly, he responded very quickly. Hi, Simon. The effect is caused by the fact that the SDO is in orbit around the Earth rather than the moon changing direction or anything like that. The spacecraft orbits Earth quicker than the moon does. In the first transit across the SDO image, the spacecraft catches up and passes the moon. In the second orbit, the spacecraft is travelling away from the sun towards the night side of the Earth, which allows the moon to catch up with SDO. I've added a diagram to help illustrate this. He even drew me a picture. An idiot's guide. Praise be. The diagram clearly shows the two different points where the moon and SDO converge during its orbit around the Earth, hence for the dual eclipse. The scientist posted me a link I previously missed during my initial research, the official Solar Dynamics Observatory blog, called SDO is Go. On this very website, they posted an article written on the 7th of September 2018, which covers this SDO lunar event. It was hugely kind of him to take the time to respond in this way. But in essence, I had now debunked my last remaining piece of evidence for craft around the sun. SDO again was launched in 2010 into an initial orbit of 2,500 kilometres or 1,600 miles. The orbit was then increased to 35,000 kilometres or 22,000 miles into geosynchronous orbit, which simply follows the Earth's orbit to remain in constant contact with ground-based satellites, whilst maintaining a constant line of sight with the Sun. Usually calls of coincidence by the mainstream to explain a story or situation is like kryptonite to truth community researchers and readers. But in this case, it just so happens a few observatory webcams were down for maintenance, along with the lunar eclipse of the SDO, all happened at a similar time to the sunspot shutdown. But given all that, considering the sheer amount of official telescopes, satellites and cameras around the world, it's almost obvious on a regular basis things that the public aren't supposed to see are captured on film and then censored. When taking into account the huge weight of experiences, abductees, insiders, whistleblowers, citizen footage, which clearly proves the existence of ETs and UFOs, directly contradicting the mainstream narrative. NASA is known to edit images, airbrush out anomalies. The International Space Station cuts the exterior video when the UFOs come into frame during live broadcasts. Commercial airline pilots are discouraged from reporting sightings with threats to their career. The fact that other observatories around the world didn't report anything is hardly surprising. Even if craft were spotted near the sun, or strange solar activity was witnessed, it's very easy to argue that the official images we receive are sanitised, manipulated, if not falsified completely. So in many ways, it's business as usual. More of the same secrecy we expect from the powers that be. In the previous video, I highlighted Holloman Air Force Base as legendary in ufology, with a potential meeting between President Eisenhower and alleged extraterrestrial diplomats. Dr. Michael Saller of exopolitics.org is a hugely astute, credible researcher and provides convincing research, documentation and witnesses of this very event. So again, is Holloman a connection in any way to the present day evacuation? We can only speculate. The researcher, abductee and former mainstream UK councillor Simon Parks presents a bi-weekly show called Connecting Consciousness on YouTube. He claims to have family connections within the British intelligence community, along with connections with elite circles via a late family member. As a result, he occasionally receives covert insider information. 
He spoke on his own YouTube show on the 15th of September and also with Kerry Cassidy on the 17th of September via a Project Camelot YouTube channel. Cassidy has many years interviewing insiders from black and covert space programs. Now this gets strange, very strange, but it's important to write and disseminate with no filters. I'll convey what was said, you just have to decide whether you agree or not. No one really, with certainty, can be sure how deep and twisted the rabbit hole goes. The interview was interesting and that there are two different researchers whose inside information seems to correlate or dovetail in some way. Also, the intel roughly tallies with Benjamin Fulford's earlier information, which also came from a British MI6 insider, so very similar to Park's connections. Simon, at the very start of the interview, stressed very earnestly he wouldn't communicate something unless he thought it wasn't absolutely true or hadn't double-checked it. He described the Sunspot Observatory as being the finest in the world at capturing images of the Sun from Earth. He explained the telescope equipment as being a mixture of optical and digital imaging technology. Parks also still claims that seven other observatories were taken down in places such as Spain, Chile and Hawaii. This meant there were no civilian eyes now on the sun. At Sunspot, computers and files were taken, specifically because craft were seen around the sun and the authorities didn't realise the imaging was so good that it was able to clearly capture the ships entering the area of the sun. Hence why the Sunspot Observatory was quickly closed down by the FBI, which in itself was a cover, because it could be linked to criminal investigation due to the FBI's presence. Parks expanded his claims to include the post office, which if you remember was also evacuated by the authorities. He claims it was being utilised as an undetectable way to leak information about extraterrestrial craft and unusual solar activity. Now it gets stranger. Simon and Kerry both confirmed a connection with D-Wave, or quantum computing which links to the work of Eamon Ansbro, who works as both a scientist and astronomer. Ansbro is developing a quantum experiment to contact extraterrestrial or interdimensional entities. Kerry interviewed him in February of this year. Both Simon and Kerry stated that this telescope had been experimenting with these very ideas of contact. Parks advised the craft that were witnessed were the result of earlier quantum communications. He was told by his insider that the craft appeared to alter the frequency of the light and energy of the sun to assist Earth and humanity towards a more positive outcome. So in a way, this intel incorporates fragments of earlier information concerning craft, unusual solar activity, and the idea that solar radiation and light having a huge effect on our spiritual and intellectual growth from direct interaction and upgrading of our DNA. Parks claims it was actually the military with connections to the White House that ordered the raid on Sunspot, because they want a controlled disclosure They firstly want people to realise the truth about 9-11, child trafficking, debt slavery and all the other crimes against humanity first, before unveiling disclosure as the final piece to the puzzle. On the 19th of September, QAnon, which is an alleged US military intelligence collective, started answering some very fascinating questions on 8chan from anonymous users. Q. Are we alone? Question mark. Roswell? Question mark. No. Highest classification? Consider the vastness of space. Q. Q. Did NASA fake the moon landings? Have we been to the moon since then? Are there secret space programs? Is this why Space Force was created? False. Moon landings are real. Programs exist that are outside of public domain. Q. The question is, has the Solar Observatory saga influenced this release by Q? Is the time now right for people to start being fed the truth? Of course. Aspects of this information may resonate with you, others not. That's fine. It's important to expose yourself to as many thoughts, theories and ideas as possible. The reason that humanity is in such an insular caged thought prison is down to suppression of information and manipulation of perception. All of us need to break out and realise a more positive interstellar future. Be rest assured, we all have front row seats to some of the greatest events in history. Thank you.